Hi everybody, welcome back to another video on Feynman integration. Today we'll be evaluating this integral, the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the natural log of 1 plus cosine squared x over cosine squared x dx. Um, I want to note real quick that you can actually take the antiderivative of this thing and it has an elementary representation. Uh, so you, you can anti-differentiate this um, and then plug in the upper and lower bounds into that to get your answer, if you would like. Um, I believe the antiderivative of that function right there requires about two lines of notebook paper just to write down the actual antiderivative. Uh, keep in mind, that's not two lines of notebook paper to solve it. Two lines of notebook paper to actually write down what the antiderivative of that thing is. So, um... If you'd like, if you'd like to do it, go ahead. It's maybe it be good practice, um, but that's not for me. Um, I'm going to do it this way. It's much quicker. So what we'll do is we'll create a function of t like always, and in this case, all I'm going to do is put a t right in front of that cosine squared x and uh, make it a function of t. Um, and this that's uh, that's written down right here. And then we note that f of zero is equal to zero because if you put zero in for t. Well, that whole thing will evaluate to zero. And if you plug in one, you'll get our original integral. So now we want to uh, differentiate this with respect to t and that with respect to t. And what happens if you do that is you get that f prime of t is equal to this right here. Um, hope you can see that. Um, and then I rewrote it again uh, by um, multiplying the top and the bottom by secant squared x and then use the fact that secant squared x is equal to tangent squared x plus 1, and then finally made the substitution u is equal to tangent x to arrive at f prime of t equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over u squared plus quantity 1 plus t. Um, and I wrote that 1 plus t in parentheses just to, um, you know, help people see help people recognize that this is this should be in a familiar form to most people watching uh, watching this video it's in the form um, 1 over uh, u squared plus a squared our a squared in this case is the square root of 1 plus t squared um, but that's a very common integral form and what what you get if you evaluate that integral is that f prime of t is equal to pi over 2 times quantity t plus 1 to the negative 1 half. Um, and then uh, going from f prime of t to f of t, which is what we want to do, requires integration. So we integrate this with respect to t, and we integrate f prime of t with respect to t, giving us f of t is equal to pi times quantity 1, uh, times the quantity t plus 1 to the 1 half plus c. And we can get the uh, we can get the value for c by uh, plugging in the fact that f of zero is equal to zero. So we get zero is equal to pi times the square root of one, which is just one. So zero is equal to pi plus c, giving us c is equal to negative pi. Plugging that value in for c, we get that f of t is equal to pi times quantity t plus one to the one half minus pi. And then uh, getting the answer to our original integral is as simple as plugging in 1 to this equation right here, giving us um, f of 1, which is i, is equal to pi times 2 to the 1 half, or square root of 2, um, minus pi. And uh, factoring out the pi gives you this. i is equal to pi times quantity square root of 2 minus 1. Um, and that's it. That's, uh, in my opinion, well, actually, it's not even an opinion. Uh, that, that's a much quicker way to get, uh, to get the answer to this integral um, rather than taking an antiderivative of this thing right here and then plugging in the upper and lower bounds. Um, but I don't usually do integrals on this channel um, that you can do uh, with normal techniques. Um, I made an exception in this case just because it's it's extremely time consuming um, and difficult to evaluate the antiderivative of that function right there. So anyway, 
That's the answer. Hope you enjoyed that.